Hi everyone, welcome to DIY Ideas. So for today we have an upcycling project to do. So if you don't know what upcycling is, it's actually when you use something old to make something new or refresh your wardrobe so to say. So this was a super basic army jacket. As you can see, what I did is change up the collar and the pockets, which means I'll also show you how to um, take certain parts off and redo them. So I'll show you how to do applications out of fabric onto your pieces of um, clothing and how you can do certain things both by hand and with the sewing machine, how to do buttons and how to shorten seams. So here on the bottom I did kind of a frayed look, but that's also optional. So you can simply take the things that you like and use those and let's get right to it. So from the back I did something a bit more drastic since I didn't really like the boring back part. So this is what I did, I hope you guys are gonna like it. So the cool thing about upcycling is that nobody has such a piece of clothing um, when you upcycle it and then it's really the only one, you're the only one in the world that has it. So let's get to it. So you will need a jacket that you like, maybe even another piece of clothing, your ruler or measuring tape, and an unstitcher needle. Super important for upcycling since we can just cut everything out, so a great tool indeed. Then fabric scissors, make sure they aren't dull. Then we need some pins, best if you have um, one more regular needle if you decide to do something by hand. So you can use the sewing machine as well, so feel free to do whatever you like or find easier. And also I have a really nice decorative border that I want to use. And you could take whatever you like pretty much, so it's important that you plan ahead what you want to get as an end result. So that's a must in these types of projects. So if you're working with fabric, you have to take care that you choose the fabric that is about the same thickness and robustness of your original fabric, maybe even a bit thicker. For example, if you have a jacket out of a straight, non-stretchy material, um, it would probably be best if you find a very similar new fabric that you would use. Um, so that would be good. So I have here a bit thicker fabric that you would actually use for furniture, chairs and similar, but I really like the pattern and the colors, so I decided to use it for today. So this is going to be my material of choice. And the border should fit really nicely with it. I took a bit of a different one, but I think it will match. So I have two meters of length. And I will probably not need all of it, but it's always better to have a bit left over than if you end up not having enough for your project. The fabric is about 50 centimeters wide. Since I'm not doing anything huge, it should be enough. With upcycling projects, it's usually about the details. So this piece is 1.5 meters um, times half a meter. So let's get started. So first you need your old piece of clothing and the first step is to make a plan of what you would like to do. What do you want to change, what do you want to hide or maybe leave like that or emphasize and when you plan everything then you can also prepare your materials for the project. So for example I don't want these pockets since I'd like to make the jacket a bit thinner in the width and I'll also have to undo the seams or stitches on the sides. Um, I don't really like the band here on the bottom and um, I think I'll also do the collar but I'm still deciding on that one. I'll leave it for now. And here I would definitely change the cuffs to a different material so that's gonna need some unstitching as well. So first I need my unstitcher and a lot to do. There are also different ways to do it, so I could theoretically try to pick out the stitches from under here, but that way you would often get holes in your fabric and sometimes it's really visible afterwards so it doesn't look as good. So if you have a possibility to do it from the inside, do it because usually 
um, and I'll show you. So um, from the inside you have it much easier since it's super obvious what you need to unstitch and I think the risk of damage by doing it this way stays on the minimal level. And yeah, the same goes for all seams and stitches. I'll start now. So first pocket is done and I'm also keeping the pieces to maybe use for another project. But you also need to take care when planning that when you take something off it's most likely still going to show some traces. So usually where the stitches were but sometimes it's even more drastical. Um, sometimes you can see a color change or something like that but in my case you see the stitches and now although I was super careful I did end up with some holes in here usually where the stitches went there and back a couple of times you usually do that to secure everything when you sew but when you unstitch it it might get tricky but anyway it's not too bad since I'm planning on shortening my jacket anyway and I'm gonna take this line as my bottom line so that way it won't be visible um, that there was something else here. So I'll do the next pocket and um, the seams that we have on the sides here. Now here is my bottom stitch. It's usually a bit thicker here but it's still doable. So for such projects you really need a lot of patience because this takes a while if you don't want holes or mistakes or other damage. So you see I took off the cuffs and the both pockets and the bottom stitches. Apart from that I also took a little piece of fabric um, uh, from here off. And um, we will do something here as well. So here on top I took the collar off and I'll just redo all of the pieces with the same type of fabric that I chose. And here this was sewn together and I'll put it back but after I put the new fabric on there as well. Same goes for the other side. So that's my preparation and now I can start with my little projects. So the first thing I'm gonna do are probably gonna be the cuffs and the collar. So discard the buttons off of the cuffs. We will need those a bit later. And then do the same for the other button. And now align the new fabric with the old fabric so that you can copy off the shape. And I think that you might need a bit more of the new fabric both in case of the cuffs and collar since we're gonna fold those um, inwards a little bit so make sure you do a little extra. And now if you take a look inside you see another piece of fabric on the inside. My material is super sturdy so I really don't need that but if your fabric is a bit more gentle or a bit more soft you might want to make it sturdier with something extra inside. Um, so cuffs and collars should be stable, but I think it's best or maybe easiest if you take a thicker fabric to start with and then 
Um, you basically don't have to worry about that since you won't have any wish issues working with it and you don't need any extra steps. And now here are all of my pieces. I pinned them together to be able to cut precisely. And now you can take those off. You don't need them anymore. So now I'll show you how to do this. So put one on another, but like this. So pretty side on pretty side and then pin together and then sew along the three sides so that you have one side left open. So one of the longer ones and do that with all the pieces that you have. Pretty side on pretty side and sew three sides up and the um, one on the bottom you leave open. Make sure it's always the bottom because here with the color you see that one side is not as wide. So the one um, that you always don't sew or you leave those open are the bottom ones and not the top ones. Feel free to leave a lot on the other side in order to make it neater. And now you can cut the corners, but make sure you don't get to the edges. And turn inside out. Align the stitches. You can also use a pin or a needle to fix it. If you have an iron, you can now go over your pieces to secure the stitches and the alignment. So I'll pin it and then we'll sew again. Before we sew, you can align the bottom edge a bit by pushing a section to the inside like this. So super easy. So just a little bit and either go over it with an iron or pin it up so that it doesn't slip away. So that way it stays in place where you want it. And then um, go from the outside and do the same motion so that everything stays the same. So starting from the one side and along the longest side and then to the other corner and make sure that this stays folded. And you can also leave a bit of it on the outside of the stitch, just like on the original pieces, as you can see here. Make sure that you don't go all the way to the end because you still need to connect the bottom section um, with the rest of your jacket. 
And this also goes for each piece, so cuffs and collar. So this particular piece is almost done, but the cuffs also need a button and a hole for it. So we will do the collar first and connect it with the jacket. Here is the edge where the collar goes. And when you connect, make sure that this side is not visible. So fold it in a bit and put onto the corner. and pin. Take a look that this here aligns with the original stitches. And you go all around and make sure you align everything nicely. After you pinned it all, you can slowly and carefully sew. So now we are getting to the cuffs, buttons and holes is what we need. So let's see. It's best if you can mark this spot with a regular pin. So now we know where it is and the button we will simply do on the other end of the cuff. The knot I will hide in the middle, so that's pretty nifty. And now simply sew the button to the cuff. If you have never done a hole for the button on any piece of clothing, make sure you do a test first before working on your actual fabric. But apart from that, your sewing machine should actually have a setting for it. So here are the step 1, 2, 4 and the 3. So 1 is what we start with, the one side down, then 2 are the shorter sides. Um, up and down and three is the longer side and then you would go back to four to the end so when you reach the length of your buttonhole you turn to um, your next step your second step and then three and then four the stitch length should be between zero and one so really close Then I'll sew up to this mark a bit more. Now take the needle up and switch to two. I do this usually five times and then I switch to step three. You see here that it jumps to the side. And go automatically back. You don't need to do a reverse stitch this time. Mm -hmm. 
And this is what it looks like, the four sides, the four steps here. And we can now fold and cut with the scissors carefully. And then you can make it a bit neater. You can use your fingers to pull the frayed threads out. That helps it look a lot nicer too. And you can see if the button fits. Now you need to connect this to the sleeves, same way as the collar. Make sure to push the open edge in so that the um, part is nice and neat and then you can sew together. So this is now done, we are coming to this section here. I took out the fake pocket from here and I want to replace it with my own fake pocket. And for that I cut a little piece out that's actually a bit wider than the original since we need to fold on all the sides. So this is my pocket and the shape that I liked and now we just need to fold all the edges like this. And you can either go over them with an iron or if you're not really secure and don't want to use it, you can also use pins to secure it and make sure it stays in place. So choose as you like and do so. So here is my pinned pocket with all the sides folded nicely. And now I'll simply start on the side with the stitch. Now we need to put this back on here and I'll just put it right where it was to hide the stitches. So just sew this up or you can of course do just the side stitches and then have a real pocket. But since I decided to do a fake pocket, I'm actually doing all of the sides. For these pieces I want to do something too, so I'll do these only halfway so they look nicer than they do now. So for that I also have um, some fabric, always a bit over it, and now I'll put again pretty side on pretty side and sew all the sides apart from the bottom together. Then I will turn so inside out and put it on here. So now I turn this inside out and I'll sew up the bottom of the piece to the jacket. Now I'll connect this section exactly there where it was before, so just make a little cross. So here we are on the back now and you can do a section of your back in your new fabric. Um, crooked or straight, so pretty much as you like it. I oriented myself to the shape of the jacket and I decided to do kind of a round style on top, so kind of a um, semi-circle. 
So yeah, this side won't be folded inwards because we will do a nice band or border over it. Apart from that, I folded and pinned the other three sides, of course. And as I mentioned, you could also use an iron if that's easier for you or just use pins. And yeah, I used these stitches as my guide. And later I will do something with the bottom section of my jacket since I want to shorten this a little bit and I want to do kind of a frayed look. So in my case, um, the length of my new fabric is going to be up to here on purpose, but the only um, thing that really matters is that you don't have any frayed sides or edges. So if you do and you still really want to use the fabric that you have, make sure you do a zigzag stitch or something similar to make sure it doesn't fray anymore and it doesn't fall apart. So we are now ready to sew the fabric onto the jacket and I'll just follow um, pretty much the edge of it. And now, depending on what you want to do and which border you want to use, you might not be able to use your sewing machine, but I'll try to put this mirrored section to the side and hopefully it will work. So now comes the bottom section. I decided already where I want my phrase to start. So you'll see in a moment what kind of style I'm doing, which also means that you can do your thing. So feel free to do whatever you find pretty, maybe wider or um, thinner stripes. And you might even do knots or some additional stuff and decoration on it, some pearls or something like that, or you might leave it as it is. But anyway, let's get to it and then you can see exactly what I mean. So this is where I want to start with them and it also aligns with the pocket that we took off. So it's not bad that the stitches um, are kind of visible, so in the end they will hopefully disappear. And the buttons should fit too. So this is probably going to be the last one and the last two ones we can take off. Here I will start cutting in little stripes that I will then knot together. But this section under the cotton is most probably going to stay like this. Um, so what I'm going to do is cut it a bit lower um, so that I can stitch it up later. There we are, we can now cut this off. And the same on the other side. And now we can start with our rays or stripes. You can measure and see that all of the stripes are equally wide, but if not, just take care that the last three to four stripes um, you actually um, kind of measure or that you see how much you have left over and make sure it looks good in the end so that they're all approximately the same. We also want an even number of stripes this time. So I did about 60 stripes. Now we need to simply tie knots out of the two neighboring stripes. Thank you. 
and do that till you get to the other side. So I wanted to put actually more knots on here, but I'm not sure if it's gonna stay neat. And since I'm liking how it looks already, I think I'll just leave it like this. Although I am most probably gonna cut all of the frays a bit shorter, I just think it's gonna look a bit neater and that way I can also kinda hide the leftover unstitching braces that you can kind of see. Align them nicely and cut off. It's not bad if it's not super precise, but that's of course your choice, how neat you want it to be or how um, precise and specific you want to be in your measurements. But apart from that, you can just leave them like this. You can do some additional knots on here, maybe some additional styles. You can also do little pearls on here or maybe little badges or something like that. So feel free to do whatever other decorations you like or you see fit. But you can also, as you see here, just leave it like this. So I cut a bit off, you see, so that we don't have the old stitches on here anymore. And I think it looks great when it frays more. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. This time I really do want it to look like this. So usually we avoid frays in sewing projects, but when we're doing upcycling, it can actually end up looking um, better with time. So the more and longer you wear it, the better it looks. So let's get to the front section under the button. I prepared this a bit, but I'll take it out. Um, so yeah, as you can see, and since we did leave it a bit longer, I decided to do an extra stitch on here. So I cut the sides up so that I can divide um, the two halves and then I'll also fold it um, when I'm done with it. So I'll fold it one more extra time so I can sew it up. So like this and when you pin up and we get a neat result, a neat edge here on the bottom and you could do that with your sewing machine but I think I'll do this by hand because sadly I couldn't find the same thread color um, as what the jacket already has on here so I'll try to hide it by hand. So I just need to close this side up and a bit on the side. As you can see, I'm using a transparent thread so that it's next to invisible. But this is of course your choice. Maybe you want to do a new um, colored thread or maybe transparent or maybe you found the original thread in which case I think that's also awesome. The edges are neat and tidy, so I like it a lot now. Also, I did take off all of the buttons and I redid them the way I wanted to. So this would be a purely optional step. And here on top, you see how I made it look a lot prettier. It was a bit boring on that side. Then I also did um, the cuffs on each of the sleeves with, of course, their buttons as well. So I wanted to match these so that they are the same on our new jacket as they were um, on the old one. And yeah, that's our jacket. So we have here our phrase. We could put something on them, but I'll leave it for now because I want to show you the before and the after. So I'm gonna do a quick video on what it looked like before and a quick one on what it looked like um, what it looks like now. So that way you see that you can do a lot out of a really basic green jacket.
So this is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed our upcycling project. Feel free to let me know what you think and if you would like to see more, feel free to comment, shoot a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That way you'll stay updated with everything new that we post and you can also check out the older videos that we already posted. So thanks for watching DIY Ideas. I'll see you next time in our next project. And until then, have a wonderful day. Bye!